you, David. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you for uh, joining us on this last Sunday in January. Uh, we have an annual meeting immediately following worship, so I'll spare you announcements now because we'll have more time together later. And we'd like to um, um, begin our worship service uh, as we prepare um, to do the business of the church later today. So let's begin uh, with a prayer as we start our worship today. <clears throat> God of compassion, with humble hearts, we open our souls to you this morning, praying your spirit will inspire our dreams and visions, that we may be united together to serve you with our lives. Our congregation will continue to share the light of your love, revealed th through, to us through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. With no reason to pretend and in no position to judge, let us confess our sin before God and neighbor. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us the times we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us we have hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less of ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Amen. Friends, even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we are broken apart, God holds us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us God's own beloved children. So hear the good news of what God has to say to us today. Our sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace, David. Thank you. There is a balm in Gilead. That was my grandma Treva's favorite song, hymn. <clears throat> we turn now to scripture. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. <clears throat> a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like night spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Before them, peoples are in anguish and faces grow pale. Like warriors they charge, like soldiers they scale the wall. Each keeps to its own course. They do not swerve their paths. They do not jostle one another. Each keeps to its own track. They burst through the weapons and are not halted. They leap upon the city. They run upon the walls. They climb up into the houses. They enter through the windows like a thief. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. In response to his people, the Lord said, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a mockery of the nations. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, eaten the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall, be dream, shall dream dreams. And your young men shall, shall see visions. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Listen for the word of God. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parth Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phyrgira and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, 
This is what is spoken of through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your, old, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. <clears throat> the prophet Joel speaks of an invading army in plagues assaulting the people of God, sounding very much like the political and social unrest of our day and the plague of this evolving coronavirus. The prophet's answer to the prevailing darkness is for all the people to repent and turn toward God. And God's timeless answer is changeless, even today. Mercy and compassion and inspiration. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men, men and women shall see visions, and your old men and women shall dream dreams. The prophecies and the visions and dreams of the people of God are God's response to hardship. On the day of Pentecost, huddled in fear, thinking the powers that crucified their Lord would unleash violence upon them, the disciples gather to pray and the Holy Spirit rushes in, burning away their fears uniting them in all of their striking differences, enabling them to understand one another, though they come from different places and speak different languages. And in response to the scoffers who say they are merely drunk, Peter rises up to speak, quoting the prophet Joel, your children shall prophesy, your young men and women shall see visions, your old men and women shall dream dreams. Friends, Joel says, after all of this, Acts says, in these last days, and we together say, it is time for prophecies, for visions, and for dreams. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts this day be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the past few weeks, I have endeavored to talk with you about our common calling, encouraging us to hear God calling us through these challenging times to open our hearts to the light that comes in the darkness, in dark times like these. This week, with our annual meeting scheduled to begin in a few minutes, I have been reflecting back on the few months we have had together though we have spent all of this time apart and plagued by the coronavirus. Today, I break with my discipline of following the readings assigned by the lectionary to share with you my sense of how God is calling us individually and as a church. We have two questions to answer with our lives individually and our lives together as a church. Who are we and where are we going together? As I have endeavored to say, I can't answer these questions for you individually, nor for us together as a church. But we answer these two questions every day, intentionally and purposely, or unintentionally dragged through time by fears or busyness or politics or obligations. When we suffer hardships or invasions or plagues, says the prophet, we are called to turn toward God, who is ready and waiting and will lead and guide us and will restore us with new visions of who we are and dreams of our mission, where we are going together. As individuals, 
We experience this answer as a sense of purpose and meaning in our lives that helps us to move away from relationships and habits of despair that destroy the life within us. As a congregation, we experience this answer as an ability to make decisions, to thrive in our diversities, to learn and grow from hard times such as these when new demands are pressed upon us. Again and again I say, faith does not solve our problems, nor make everything easily work for us. Faith is neither simple nor straightforward, but is a lifelong relationship with God and neighbor, filled with mountains and valleys, hard times and times we can see how everything works together for our good. Somehow, Despite all the struggle and conflict of the prophets and the failures of the disciples we find in Scripture, we yet see difficulties and struggles as problems to be managed or solved, rather than challenges through which we meet God and in which we learn about ourselves and form new life-giving relationships with God and neighbor. This is rather a lot to take in, so let me tell you a story. <clears throat> Wednesday was a glorious snow day this week. I got up early to get my work done so I could have time to go out and snowshoe across Lake Monona. It was snowing when I set out. The wind was from the northwest at about 10 miles an hour. I set out to walk across the lake heading southeast with the wind at my back. Walking the mile and a half as best I could in a straight line as possible, knowing that I was going to have a headwind on my return journey. But when I got to the middle of the lake, the wind was howling at a lot more than 10 miles an hour. And I began to notice open patches of ice without snow. Uh, I had seen ice fishermen out there, so I knew it was safe. There was a guy parasailing on a snowboard, uh, and so I knew that the patches of ice were, were okay, but when I saw them right out of the middle of the lake, they looked like doom to me. I imagine the headlines. Local pastor falls through ice and dies despite his stupidity walking right through the, into the open water. <laughs> but I kept walking in a straight line. And I soon learned that the howling wind had spirited away the snow. When my brain got over my fears, I began to see that there were Mountain and, mountain and valleys in the snow. And I began to thread my way where the walking was easy, not plowing over the top of the mountains or walking across the hard and slick valleys of ice. It was such a delight, I started laughing right out loud, thinking of epiphany, of how we sometimes see clearly what has otherwise been hidden about how our fears and habits and traditions and relationships and customs so often blind us what is otherwise obvious. When I got to the other side and turned around to face the wind, <laughs> I zipped up my coat and fast, fastened on my, my hat and hood, looked at the compass on my watch, and headed east-southeast, straight into the teeth of the wind. It had begun to snow in good earnest. And the wind was whipping the snow on the lake into a blurry white cloud so I couldn't see the other side. I knew what direction I needed to go, but I could only see a few steps in front of me. My glasses were completely fogged over when I tried to uh, look and find the easy path that I could see when the wind was at my back. And when I got out in the middle of the lake, 
I began to be unsure of where I was, and I started to get afraid again. I began to worry about how close I was getting to where the Yahara River comes into the lake. And I regretted not bringing my binoculars, thinking that I could look out and find a landmark. Finally, I remembered the wind was from the northwest, and, it, and I was heading just a little bit west of that. So I got my bearings by walking against the wind and keeping the wind blowing me in the right direction. Then I had a second epiphany. It was easy to see and walk with the wind in my back, very much like it seems when God is with us when we are answering call and when everything is falling together and in place and the way forward is easy and clear and then we begin to find our path forward easily and the uh, footing is good and secure and walking isn't much trouble. But we also are following the spirit and following the wind and following the call by walking against the wind. The spirit leads us forward into challenge, into difficulty. And through following, and though following a headwind is hard work, we sometimes find our way and are led by the spirit when we faithfully walk against the prevailing winds. The easy way forward is not always the faithful way forward, nor is the absence of difficulty and challenging proof that we are heading in the right direction. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna say that again. The easy way forward is not always the faithful way forward, nor is the absence of difficulty and challenge proof that we are heading in the right direction. <laughs> uh, I believe in the coming months, we're going to emerge from this plague and our old and our young will return the sanctuary of God and we will do our very best to ensure all of our people are safe, knowing we will return by different paths on different timelines. It is time for us to do as Joel prophesies and Peter preaches, to begin dreaming together, young and old alike, to be united in a common vision by the Spirit who helps us to celebrate and find life and meaning in our diverse ways of talking and seeing the world and finding our place in it. It's time for prophecy, for us to see our need to repent and turn again toward God, for courageous people to open their heart to what the prophets have always called us to do, to care for the widows and orphans, to lift up the downhearted, to put the last first and give a seat at the head of the table to the least, to release captives, to proclaim the year of God's favor. It's time for vision, for us to peer into our future, inspired by our faith that God has something in store for us, so we can make decisions and work together, thriving in our differences, united in our faith that God is making a way for us. And it's time for us to dream, inspired by the Spirit, not bound by the narrow customs and traditions and comforts that say, our dreams are foolish and impossible, for dreaming opens us to the future God promises to us, which always utterly transcend, transcends what we can know or imagine or that we could dream would be possible. And so, may God bless you, friends, and your family. May the Spirit inspire your dreams and grant you clear vision.
And may God bless us, Windsor UCC. Amen. David's going to be away uh, next week on vacation, a well-earned vacation, so uh, we'll miss him. Have a nice week and come back safely to us. Uh, we are going to conclude our worship service now. Uh, we will uh, begin our next service, uh, our live stream, um, with David playing music and with a prayer, and we'll end our annual meeting with a benediction. Uh, so David is going to um, play us a postlude now. And as we begin, uh, you'll begin to hear David again, and uh, uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs>